Hey everyone, it's Tasha here and today we have a liquid latex tutorial. Ooh. Oh no. Yes, yeah, so as it's Halloween week, Hallow week, we're gonna, um, well, I'm going to be showing you a tutorial that I've, well, I've been practicing on myself for the past, in the past. I've only done it like once or twice, once of them was kind of rushed and the other one, it did take some time but it was pretty cool. So hopefully you enjoy this video. In case you're wondering, I am in my bedroom. It's a bit messy, so I'm, I'm sorry. And if there is a lot of noise, it's because I'm filming right by the uh, window and the window's open. So I'm sorry for that. Okay, let's get started. So what you're gonna need for this is a box or a container that you don't really um you don't really use anymore. I've got. This one rubs from the kitchen because we have quite a few and nobody's really going to use a lunchbox this size so this is not mine. I also use a uh, makeup sponge, this one. I don't use this one anyway because I don't like the shape of it but um, I need a new one because the bottoms are like solid from where I've previously used it and not washed it, my fault. But you can use anything, you can use like a brush, a sponge. I wouldn't recommend using your fingers, I'd probably use something that's like, you can dab. Yeah, we're going to be using this half, but you can do this tutorial anywhere on your body as long as, I don't know, as long as you follow the steps. Okay, the next thing you're going to need is liquid latex. I got this from um, Smithy's, it was, I think it was £3, three, four, five. I don't know, somewhere in that area. Either 3 or £5. Sorry, there's like a guy walking past, he's like staring at me. <laughs> yeah. So this was like, um, it's only a small amount but you really, you don't need that much because, to be honest, I've, uh, I've only used, I've only used, I've done this once before and I've only used like two or three drops. So yeah, but it, it doesn't smell that nice, be warned. Unless, unless it's just the kind that I've got. Next you will need I'd recommend using face paint but I don't really have any today so I'm going to be using chalk. This is my hair chalk but it works the same. Yeah, I'm going to be using these bottom colours. You want to use mainly dark colours so I'd recommend using getting purples, blacks, browns and reds. And you will also need fake blood but, or oh, I wouldn't say fake blood because it stains quite a bit but um, it does go quite well but you can also use like a very not clear paint but like a deep set colour paint which apparently my friend told me it washed off quite well and it works the same as uh, as fake blood. You're also going to need some tissue. Um, to be honest you don't need quite a lot, I've just got a lot in case I like screw up and need more but yeah. You only need like two pieces, like two little squares at the most, maybe even three. Uh, I would recommend that you use like a clear type paper, like sometimes you can get like a coloured paper, coloured toilet paper or kitchen paper, but uh, yeah I would recommend using clear, which it is quite helpful. So on to the tutorial, first, first of all we're going to take our liquid latex and put it into, well first of all we're going to get our area. I would recommend, if you're going to do it on like a hairy area, hairy area like on the back of your arms here where there's like quite a lot of hair or like I don't know somewhere that has lots of hair like your leg I'd recommend shaving it unless you want like to be getting a free wax from yourself that's quite painful I've done it in the past but I'm going to be using the inner side of my arm because it is actually it's easier to use because it's quite smooth and there's not as much hair there's not as many long hairs there so it doesn't hurt as much when you take it off plus it's Quite cool. It's quite cool. So we're going to take oh, take our liquid latex, and we're only going to put like a small, small amount in. Be warned, liquid latex does take quite a long time to dry. So if you want, you can use a hair dryer, or you can just wait if you've got a lot of time. And this latex isn't coming out. Come out. So I would say you only need, I don't know, I'd, I'm, 
I'm just guessing a guest a bit of. Uh, like, oh, too much, too much, too much. Too much, that's way too much, so that's gonna be perfect. There's obviously gonna be a lot left over, so you don't really need that much. So it's like, it's cool. Yeah, it might actually need a bit more, I'm not sure. And my back's starting to hurt because I'm sitting awkwardly. Oh, yeah, no. I've got a cup of water, I don't know if I should have mentioned that. This is mainly because my chalk needs like water to be like transferred, but yeah, I think water is also needed. I'm just gonna readjust myself because I'm really awkwardly sat. That's even more awkward, I'm gonna go back to how I was. Right, so, once we've got our latex out, we're gonna take our tissue and we're actually gonna split it in half. Sometimes you get three ply, I think it's called. I think there's only two, so we're gonna get like two thin, thin pieces like this. Uh, I don't think you can rip it anymore. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna get two thin pieces and depending on how big you want your wound or gash to be, depends on which way you rip it. If you only want it to be small, I'd rep recommend ripping it this way. So just like, you just rip it. I think if you rip it, it it's a bit wonky. If you rip it, it gives it like this really cool, like ripped, well obviously a ripped effect, which actually looks a lot cooler when it's on because it looks, makes it look more realistic. So yeah. So just make sure it's not too big because as you go up, you want to gradually get into smaller pieces. Um, for bigger wounds, I would suggest doing it lengthwise. Just that way you get like a longer piece of tissue. And so I think you're going to need probably about, yeah, the two sheets of that ripped up. But I don't think you'll use it all. I don't know. You know what, I actually, I'm going to go back on myself. And you only need actually one piece of tissue because you actually get a lot from ripping it with your two ply. More people walking past. Everybody's out today and it's raining. Don't know why. Oh, this isn't going right. It's probably because I'm ripping it slowly. Yeah, no, it's pretty crap. Hello, Mr. Cole. Yeah, I, I can't rip this. <laughs> I can't rip the toffee. There we go. There's a thin piece. You do actually want to get a few thin pieces, like, not thin, small pieces, like, in width. Because it's just going to be that part where you actually, like, build up. So, yeah, there we go. So... Yeah, with that hand, you should actually get like quite a big handful of tissue. You might want to rip more just in case, but that's your choice. I think I am going to rip a bit more because I haven't really done well in ripping. How is everybody's half term in the UK? Mine has been quite boring. I've actually been rearranging the bedroom with my sister. We have so much stuff to sort out. I think that's gonna that shelf over there is gonna contain probably makeup and DVDs. We have quite a lot of DVDs. It's mainly me because I absolutely love movies. So why not? There we go. I have enough pieces now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take a non-solid part of sponge. We're just gonna get a small amount. Uh, a mediumish amount of uh, latex on there and then we're just gonna cover a small area not too much because you don't want your uh, toilet paper to get soggy so we're just gonna cover a small area make sure it is has got kind of a lot of uh, latex on there because you do want your toilet paper to stick so we're gonna have let's say about that amount I don't know if you can see that amount of uh, liquid latex and then before it dries up because no me it probably will dry just got latex on my bed. I don't know where to put this. Right. So before it dries up we're just gonna get a piece of tissue paper and we're just gonna stick it on there. It doesn't matter if the the whole tissue isn't stuck down because you can just pull it away later. And then you're just gonna pat it down so it's all stuck. And someone's gonna come in the bedroom now. It's my little brother, yeah. I don't think he can open the door. <laughs> right, 
right and then with the extra pieces that are like not stuck down I think you just pull that away if you want which gives it like an extra like rugged effect ripped rugged ripped effect which is what you kind of want if you go for the whole zombie zombie theme and then once that's all like once you've got the amount that you want it's really awkward you're gonna take your sponge again and cover I'd say cover most of that area don't go whole around the edges don't go like right to the edge just like go a few millimeters from the edge and just cover that with latex you do actually want quite a lot more the same amount as you used before but maybe a bit more just so you can actually cover that whole tissue or the area that you want and then you're just gonna slowly build it up but yeah slowly build it up so uh, you might want to stick down the edges that's up to you but I'd recommend you know what, yeah, let's let's recommend sticking down the edge. Just scrap what I said before, just stick down everywhere. Go over the whole tissue. If pieces come off, that's fine, just don't worry. As long as you've got most of it covered, you'll be fine. Oh, sounds weird outside. Spooky schools. It's gonna sing a song. Uh, right, yeah, so now that we've got most of it covered, just gonna wipe away the bits that are actually on my skin and not on the tissue. We're gonna take another piece, let me find a thickish piece, to stick over. So I've got this piece and we're just gonna layer that straight on top of the area that's got the latex on. It doesn't matter if it doesn't cover the whole of the bottom piece of tissue because we don't really want it to cover we don't want it to be like a big layer we want it to sort of gradually get smaller towards the middle and then we pat that down and let that dry let that too dry my voice going weird and then again we just pull off the edges that aren't stuck down because we don't need them uh, my fingers are getting all sticky now excuse me Okay, almost done. It doesn't actually matter as well if you get some like bits, like lines, because that'll just add to the effect, which is quite cool. So it gives you like a veiny kind of effect. Alright, now once that feels kind of dry, like it's not going to rip, same again, same step, latex. Layer it on top, but don't go right to the edge, stick towards the middle-ish like throughout the whole thing because we, this is where we're going to start like layering and getting gradually closer to the middle so it doesn't matter if you go from top to bottom and it's right to the edge, it's just the sides where we don't want it to go fully to the edge I can't talk properly right now because my throat is getting dry right, that's quite covered, so then we are going to take a smaller piece of tissue and just layer that on top. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that bit was too small. I don't know. <coughs> uh, right, and yeah, and then we're just gonna pat that down. I just realised I've forgotten the scissors. We'll find them when it's drying. It's fine. Yeah, you are gonna need like something sharp, but not easy enough to kill you, just cut your skin. You're not going to need something obviously to cut to give you a wound, like a hole to what it looks like your skin's been cut open. If you're not going for the whole cut open effect then you just want, I don't know, like blisters or, oh what's the word, like frostbite kind of effect where it looks like your skin's peeling away. You don't really need to cut into it, you just need I don't know, you probably just need to layer it. I've never really tried a, um, like a blistery skin peeling away kind of a thing. I've only ever really done, um, like wounds or zombie scratches, things, I don't know. So then once we've got the next piece on, we're just going to layer a bit more into the middle. This is probably, you're probably only going to need at least, I don't know, three to four, I don't know, four or five, seven at the most, pieces of tissue. 
<coughs> oh, sorry, my throat's like quite dry. I should really get a drink, but I can't be bothered. So just gonna cover that, and then I've run out of liquid latex. So let's get a bit more. And then we're just gonna layer like a fine old small piece in the middle. Where is a small piece? Let's go with this one. It's quite small. And we're just gonna pat that down again. And I need to get some more latex out. I guess I do need a bit more. Oh, there we go. A little bit more. There we go. So yeah, if you ever do really need more latex than what I've said, just go ahead and empty a bit more out. I don't really think it's going to affect you. It's not going to affect your bowl or anything, obviously. So then once our final piece is kind of dry, we're just going to go ahead and cover that, cover the whole thing with uh, latex. So I'm just getting rid of all these dry pieces of latex around the edge. So we're just going to cover this last piece, or the whole piece, so yeah, I'll bring the camera down and show you it all in a bit, once I've just covered this. So we're just going to fully cover all the tissue that we've got with uh, latex, making sure everywhere is covered, every little bit. It is kind of awkward when you get it on the skin, you're trying to colour it in because obviously it's like the colour isn't going to stick to the... Uh, the latex that's on the skin. So this is what my um, my wound is looking like right now. Hopefully you can see that well. <laughs> the camera is not it's not in light room. Yeah, this is what mine's looking like. You can see where it's been layered. Obviously, I think I should have really done. I could have done better, but under circumstances, I think this is good enough. So we're just going to leave this to dry. And you'll know when it's dry because it's obviously going to be dry. You don't want it to be at that point where it's like tacky. You want it completely dry. So if you want to speed up the process of it drying, you can use a hairdryer, obviously. Or you can just the time take its course. Time take its course. Time take effect and uh, just let it dry by itself. In the meantime, I'm going to go and find a pair of scissors. Actually, I do have purses, but they're not quite so. I'll be back. And I'm back. Oh, yeah, I'm back. Oh, my fingers are all icky. I've got, like, what's it? It's like when you put PVA glue on your hand. And all just starts to peel. <coughs> and I really need a drink. Okay, so the way I'm sat gave me a dead leg. And that did really add to the zombie effect. Because I just felt like my leg was not there. Mainly my foot. Which it wasn't nice, it was the world's worst feeling then. Especially that tingling feel, the tingling after the numbness is, oh my god, it's pain. You just, you don't want to move, but you kind of got to. It's like everything, a little move, is just painful, it's, it's not nice. Ugh. Lovely old tap water. Lovely. Okay, so I've actually been quite impatient, I've used the hairdryer. So it's almost done. Almost done. So yeah. Just gonna flow on this for a little bit more. And hopefully soon. The only pair of fizz scissors I could actually find were these these ones. If you could get like a small, really small pair of like beauty scissors, I think you can I don't know, my sister had a pair. Well that was random. My uh card ran well my card got full. Which was really awkward. This doesn't feel like it's going right. But yeah, anyway, I forgot to say, I've just, after deleting some videos, I've just realised that um, I have actually changed my hair colour. This is like, this is close to what my natural hair colour is like. I think my natural is a um, bit lighter than this, but yeah, it's a nice colour. But soon it shall not stay the same because I'm going to be going a purple colour or a red colour. I'm going to be going a different colour. I'm not staying the same for long. I don't know why, I like to dye my hair, it just feels fun. Is it just me? I don't know, I get bored with like having the same colour hair like all the time. Okay. So this is, mm, this, my, mm, my latex is almost dry, it's like, it actually looks like a pair of bandages you'd find on a zombie, but. 
<coughs> Sorry. Dying. Yeah. I'm just gonna... Pee. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just peeling away the edge. Yeah. So anyway, once it's like completely dry, like, it's not, it's not tacky or anything, like no pieces are coming off when you like rub it like this. So I can do this and like none of the pieces are coming off. That is the time when you want to cut it. If I would suggest if you want like a gash type wound, just go straight down the middle and then you can like cut around the edges later. I'll show you what I mean because I've done that before and it does look kind of boring when you just do a straight cut down the middle. So what you're going to do is find an area where you want your wound to like, I don't know, you want it to start. If you've got a massive pair of scissors like me, I would recommend being insanely careful and just taking like a snip of it. You can, well for me, I don't know if you can, but for me right now I've been able to pull a bit out. So I'm just going to cut away at that. Oh, there we go. It's a hole right there. It's going to end up weird now. And then, once you've actually got your hole, being insanely careful, you're just going to cut along. Oh, it looks so gross. Ah, I've got scissors sticking in my arm. Help me. Yeah, you're just going to... I'm quite weird. You're just going to cut along that. Giving yourself your, um... Wounded effect. You have to be so careful. I'm actually stretching it, which is not good. That's why I hate using big scissors, because you just stretch. There's some hair in there. It's pretty gross. Yeah. I'm just waiting for my mum to come home. So. Arr, it doesn't. It doesn't smell too nice either. Like before, it smelled bad, but I think a bad thing about these scissors is scissors are they're not cutting properly and I'm like too close to the edge of my wound let's go too far so if that does happen like you go too far like you're at you're pretty much at the edge of your uh, wound and you still have a bit that you want to cut try and um get into the other side and just do that and like just cut away at there no! I accidentally pulled it and it came off. Okay, yeah, that'll do, that'll do. Right. Okay, it's stripped back together. It's not something that you don't want. So, if you've got, like, little lumps, see, like, like this, it's up to you if you want to, um, keep them on. I'm just going to cut mine off because I don't like it. It looks, it doesn't fit in at all. It's up to you as well how big you have the um, the edges sticking out. You can either have them sticking out like kind of a bit or like have them massive and like... Ugh, got like hair stuck in it. Right, yeah. Let's try and get these out. Them hairs are staying there apparently. Okay, so yeah, so what you should have is something that looks like this. So you've got like this weird sort of looking thing on your arm. It looks like a cast has been cut open or something. Which is, it's quite, it's what you want. Maybe not this end bit here. This bit that's closest to my hand because it doesn't look that real. But you never know, it's up to you. Just study some, um, study some wounds online. So sort of get an idea of what you want. And then you should be fine. Just make sure to clean up after yourself which tissue right yeah so once you've got your wound open wound opening thing you're going to want to start to uh, work on the color now for the edges it's up to you if you want to use like a makeup that's uh i think if you use it close to your skin color let me check choose my makeup here i have the beauty uk cc cream in natural shade 10 I, don't, I think I used this last time and it wasn't too good because the under part of your arm is uh, is really light. So I would recommend going for a, like, if you do want to do it on your underarm and you want to, um, 
you want to use a foundation go for an insanely light color otherwise it's just gonna look it's just gonna look rubbish i'm gonna do but half and half half it's gonna be um makeup and half of it will be um Chalk. <laughs> I've got the name of it. Half of it will be chalk just to give you an idea of what they both turn out like. Right now, no, nah, this has gone poo. It's quite bad because, like, it just doesn't look, it's not blending or anything. If you can blend it, that'd be great. But right now, I can't, so. Yeah, it's not, it's not looking too good. A bit, less, a bit more in. So you don't want to cover the whole thing in foundation. You just want a bit because obviously you're going to be colouring the rest in with different colours. Uh, right. So that's I'd say that's blending. You a little bit more in the edges. Hopefully this one looks good, right? And then we're gonna switch on to the um, chalk. I'm gonna do the opposite side. All right. Trying to figure out which color it was I used last time. Um. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think if we go for this color, it's kind of skin tone. You can like obviously blend it and make it look, blend it with different colours and make it look a bit more skinnish towards your colour but right now I'm just gonna, no. This colour is actually an orange colour so it fails. I think maybe after it I'm just gonna wipe around the arm. It's up to you what you do around your arm. You can actually do it like a, um, like an infected type colour, like a purplish or maybe even a, uh, like a green. If you're going as like a zombie type person. But it's, it's entirely up to you. If you want to be like one of them people who are like in the games and they get like half, halfway through the game they get cut and they're like, oh, we must go on. Yeah. To be honest, they both look the same. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. This where it looks like one with chalk, one with um, foundation. It's gonna be a lot of moving the camera. I don't know if you can see the difference. One of them's a lot more thicker this side on more this side where my little finger is is foundation. So that's what it looks like. And this side with my thumb, you can see that, is um get out of the way strap is um chalk, which to be honest hasn't worked that well. It looks like a complete orange mess. So it's it's but to be honest, it's entirely up to you. If you, oh, you just see my sky up, my sky, my uh, ceiling. To be honest, it's entirely up to you. If you do want to um, use, like, go for a skin color, you can use like foundation. But if you want to go for the uh, whole, I don't know, infected, and like you've colored your whole skin, sort of color, you can go for like a purple or like a purple and blue mix or just something along them lines. Right, where is my black? Let's find the black. Okay, yeah, here it is. So for the inside, we're gonna go with quite a dark color. I'm gonna do a bit of black and a bit of a deep red. So I'm just get this is what it would be like using chalk. It'd be the same pretty much with um with paint, but obviously you're gonna have a thinner brush. So you can obviously do a lot better. So we're just gonna put a bit of a black in it. It doesn't matter if you get it on the edges of the opening here because it'll just add to the effect. Alright, you only need like the smallest amount of black because you're just going to blend it and you're just going to add the red to it to mix it. Right, I have a big messy finger. So we're going to take a really deep set red so this is what it looks like now with the black. Can you see? This is what it looks like now with the black. It just looks like a big black hole. So then we're going to add some red to the inside and around the 
edge like around the outside and hopefully that should start to make it look a bit more moon like and my mum is home so this is hopefully gonna keep going I'm gonna go as fast as I can now because she's bringing my little sister home and she'll probably just come in and be like what are you doing and she's gonna be like trying to be cool for YouTube she's really cool though Hopefully my mum doesn't look up and look at me like, what are you doing? You're meant to be tidying your room. Which I am. I'm like slowly tidying it. So, this is what we've got so far. It's like, you just want the inside to look really dark because obviously the inside of your skin is like, it's not obviously like the world's brightest colour, it's obviously going to be quite dark and if you're going for like a really old-ish kind of zombie for like, I don't know, you've been out for a week, you're going to want like a deep colour. So then to the outside area, we've obviously added like a bit of the red, we're also going to add some, was it purple I added last time? I think it was purple. Quite a deep, so we're going to take quite a deep purplish colour. I'm just going to add that to the outside, not the inside, because we want quite a bruised colour to be added around the edges. But whereas, it obviously, it's going to look stupid when you first start, but then as you start to blend, it's going to look so much better. So we're just going to keep blending that in with the um, red. And then obviously if you need to add more red or more different colours like you have to take up. It doesn't matter if it's quite messy because that just makes it look cooler. I mean you want to make sure there's no like orange effect sort of coming through from the uh, tissue or the latex. Otherwise it sort of puts it off. You can obviously go further down and add like bruising around the bottom. Like that. And obviously on this side as well. They don't have to stay in one area because it just doesn't look real if you stay in one area. So we're obviously going to mix up this with a blue colour. You don't want it to be like a massive, insanely bright blue like this. You want it to be quite a dark... I don't know. You want it to be quite a dark, dark blue so... Who walks around with like... A neon blue bruise, nobody. So you're gonna take quite a dark colour. And we're just gonna sorry about all the traffic. I don't know why there is so much. So we're gonna take that dark blue and just add small amounts around to the purple. Cars go away. We're just gonna mix it up and you know, I'm just gonna keep blending them all together. So we get like obviously a bruised effect. It doesn't matter if you get some of the blue or some of the um, red on the inside or some of the purple. It's just gonna add. It's probably just gonna make it look deeper. You're obviously gonna be covering the inside anyway with um, with blood. So nobody's really gonna be like, oh, why well, have you got purple on the inside when it's like when it's a wound. Ah, uh, so, right now mine's starting to look quite weird, because it's just like purple and blue and orange in some places because of the foundation and the chalk. So this is what mine's looking like right now. I'm just going to take this. This is what mine's looking like right now. It looks really stupid. But we're going to add some red to that, just to give it a more bruised effect. Bruised. Yeah, we're going to take the same red as what we added on the inside, this deep red, and we're just going to add that everywhere. You don't want to go like overboard with it, but you do want it to be in there so it like stands out. I'm just going to mix this all up. <sighs> to be honest, it doesn't really matter what it looks like because as long as it turns out good for you, 
it's a good deal. Because, you know, you're going out in the dark, nobody's going to see you. Unless you're, like, an inside right party or something. But, yeah. Can add some more red everywhere. So, if you add, like, bits of red to, like, the outside and sort of, like, blend it, it just makes it look... I don't know. It just makes it look cool, I think. So it, as long as you can like see all the different colors and like it looks bruised, you know, you've got a bit wood. As long as you've got that purplish blue color, and then you kind of get this bit of this bit of white here. Oh, it doesn't matter. I think somewhere as well you can also get like I'm not sure if you can get like a red latex but I know you can get black so you can always add that on and give yourself like some 3D vein looking stuff but yeah so so far this is what we've got so I'm actually quite happy with this like it just looks so infected and just so so gross so yeah I'm, I'm happy with this you can obviously you can't see any skin unless you're like right up close and just like examining it but i don't think anybody will they're just gonna be like that's so gross dude so now let me find we have the paint i've got a watercolor set because i think i gave my oh crap i gave my other colors to my sister and i think she likes to read them out or something but these are like colors that i've actually used before in the past to like decorate clothes with like a blood effect so if you want you can sort of like add um it's all gross because i haven't used it in so long if you want you can sort of add like water to this and give it a bit of a um get some tissue and clean itself you can give it a bit of a watery running effect you know you can always just go and get like poundland's like uh fake blood that's where i did last year and it still worked the same, you know. But it like it's sort of stained, so you've got to, like scrub to get it off. So I'm gonna find somewhere to mix this in here. So if you do want it to be like um like a thingy colour, like a uh, runny deep mess type thing, just add it into your bowl that you know you can wash out. Just add some um, water to it, like, just add the smallest amount, I don't think you're going to need too much. Uh, add a small amount of water. I didn't think I should have done this in a liquid bowl. In the latex bowl, but, oh well. See, so, obviously because this is a watercolour, it's going to start to run. You can obviously add, like, deeper colours to it, like reds or... Uh, not reds, blues, purples, you know, to make it just go deeper. Someone has visited, what did Oh, that's Jim. My neighbour visited. He's quite cool. So if, uh, So we've got this sort of runny colour. So if you want it to be deeper, you can just go ahead and add, I don't know, add a blue. I'd suggest I haven't really got any deep blue, so I think I'm going to have to stick with this. Uh, I don't know, the best I can do is like black. Let's add a bit of black. Oh, I didn't even open this one before. So just gonna add like a small drop of black in there. And clean the top because don't these two colours mixing. Oh it's going everywhere. That's my one. So now we're just gonna mix all these up. <coughs> Hopefully it gives us like a deeper, deeper red. And that's just made it go entirely brown, which is not what I wanted. So, pretty much, if you've got, if you do go too far and you get like a black color, or or you want like I don't know, if it just if it goes too far, just keep mixing your colors until you've got the right amount. It's raining. It's so nice. Oh, 
I miss paint. He's gonna enter now. Be my Hello. sister. So I don't think this worked right as well. So we're just gonna keep mixing. Here we go, my sister. So unless you're a pro at a mixing, I would just suggest stick to like, I don't know, <laughs> stick to liquid paint. I'm just going to add some of this in here, just to give you an idea of what. Just try up this in here. This is obviously way too bright for the sort of effect that I'm going for. I did want to add, I did want it to be like quite dark and yucky, but you know. I'm not gonna get that. I've got paint everywhere. So we're just gonna spread this paint around. Spread it around town. Spread it both ways. Yeah. So it just makes it look a bit more, you know, 3D. So nobody has dry blood on the inside. And a bit around the edges. And then <coughs> we've sort of got this. It's like I should really dry my hands. What my hands are doing? So we've just got this like really gooey, watery type effect. I'm actually quite happy with this, even though you know it would have been better if I had. Um, face paint and fake blood but I don't but you know as long as it turns out cool nobody's gonna care you know and then you'd have like your costume on you'd be like help me somebody's killed me or well somebody's cut me a zombie's got me and then you turn into a zombie so I hope you enjoyed this video leave a comment below if you'd like me to do more tutorials um, for Halloween, if you didn't read my blog, I'm hopefully, if I've got the money, going to be a Day of the Dead type girl. So I might record that for you if you like. It won't be uploaded on Halloween, but it will be after, so I'm sorry about that. Um, if you would like me to do any more tutorials, like my makeup or like, I don't know, just something random, just let me know. Leave a comment and uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to peel this off and show you all what it looks like. It does look quite cool when you wear uh, when you take it off. It's all ripping. So this is my wound. It looks so gross. And here is the paint. The painted effect. That's so gross. I need to go and wash everything. I probably need to wash my back now. But until next time. Take care, have a fun Halloween, stay safe, get lots of candy, and I will see you next time.